And now time for our top story. The more we learn about concussions, the more we seem to understand just how damaging they can be to the brain, even years after the initial hit. This morning, we're looking at what schools are doing to make sure the right steps are being taken after high school athletes get concussions and what parents should know about post-concussion protocol. Get out! Get out! It was just a timing play. Like, I got the ball and he met me at like the same time. Tyler Bue suffered a concussion playing high school baseball his senior year. Right then and there, I felt like a like, little bit of dizziness and the ear ringing. And then like later that night is like really when it kind of like set in that morning, I like was a completely different person the next morning. That hit ended Tyler's playing career. Don't want to get another concussion. Get out! With our concussion program that we have with the high schools, we'll do baseline testing. Fortunately, there was a lot of game tape of the incident, which helps with much more than just X's and O's. It also gives critical insight into player safety and where a concussion may have occurred. Tyler recovered quickly from his concussion, in part because he and his family did everything right in the days that followed. One of the most common mistakes parents make is rushing to the hospital right after a concussive hit. After a kid has a concussion, the, f the first thing everybody needs to do is just kind of take a deep breath and not get overexcited. The vast, the vast majority of these concussions are things that are going to be managed uh, after the game in the succeeding days. In 2011, Minnesota adopted the when in doubt, sit them out slogan and became one of the first states to pass a law when it comes to minors and concussions. The law requires coaches immediately remove any player under 18 showing symptoms of a concussion, and before they can suit up again, need to get medical clearance from a healthcare provider. Football is, is the most popular sport in the, our country and does have the most concussions, but we've seen, we see concussions from soccer, we see concussions from diving, we've seen concussions in gymnasts and cheerleaders as well. High schoolers tend to suffer the most concussions. That's why a three-year study on the effect of concussions on high school athletes is underway, so doctors can learn more about brain development and how it relates to long-term concussion effects. The younger kids, they seem to resolve quicker from concussion, and then in those athletes that make it to college and pro, we're seeing those long-term problems. So we don't really know where that happens or what the extent of those injuries are occurring, whether they're occurring here in high school as sub-concussive hits, whether they're occurring in Little League, or whether they only occur in professional athletes when the brain is done growing. One thing we do know is that once a child sustains a concussion, they are immediately at higher risk to get another. If a child has had multiple concussions, say more than three, you are, I think the evidence is somewhere around eight to nine times more likely to have a complicated return, as well as uh, an increased sensitivity to receiving a concussion. And it's that type of statistic that helps Tyler Bue sleep at night in spite of giving up the game he loves. And I feel like that's a big reason why I decided to stop playing, because I feel like the next one might even have a, a greater effect on me. And you saw there, Tyler, I mean, it was baseball. He was playing. Everyone automatically thinks football, right. but soccer, gymnastics, there's a lot of sports they can get a concussion from, and that's the biggest worry among parents these days. Absolutely, and I think people focus so much on football, but I know my friends talk about will they let their kids play certain sports because yep. of the concern of concussions. Yeah, it's All a right. big deal. Interesting stuff. Let's get to another morning rush now. Time for your morning rush. Today, federal leaders want to hear from you about how they can help stop future hate crimes. The U.S. Attorney's Office and the FBI are hosting a community meeting in Apple Valley in response to last week's deadly synagogue shooting. They plan to discuss hate crime law and how to best create a safe place of worship. Did you get a visit from a politician over the weekend? You're not alone. As we head into the final sprint toward the midterm election finish line, members from both parties spent much of the weekend knocking on doors and calling voters. And last night, NPR News hosted a debate between DFL Senator Tina Smith and her Republican challenger, Karen Housley. They hit on health care costs, immigration, and the divisiveness of the country. This weekend, an Anoka man got the chance to thank the two men who helped save his life on Halloween. How you doing, man? Yeah. Good. Yeah. I'm all right. <laughs> it's all good. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. You saved my life, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. Jason Broughton was walking his dog in Coon Rapids when the dog went to chase a stick and pulled Broughton forward, causing him to fall onto a metal stake. It went through his right thigh, and with no phone, Jason had to crawl to get help. That's when Brian Hiltner and Daniel McNeese stopped to help. They even helped stop bleeding until medics could arrive. Jason is going to be on crutches for a while, but thanks to those two men, he is expected to make a full recovery.
Chris, thank you. It's 6.06 .06 time now for Digital Dive. Well, the American Academy of Pediatrics is calling for a ban on corporal punishment because doctors say spanking may cause more aggressive behaviors and affect a child's brain development. Recently, a group of Minnesota parents from the association called Stop Child Protection Services from legally kidnapping, they sued the state of Minnesota, saying they had the right to spank. The main plaintiff, plaintiff in that lawsuit said two of his children were removed from their home in Apple Valley by Child Protection Services because their family babysitter reported that the father had spanked their son. Under current state law, a child can be found to be in need of child protection services if a parent inflicts bodily harm, which is defined as causing any pain, injury, or illness. So we got a lot of comments on this story from you, our local Sunrisers here. Let's start with Jackie. She says she doesn't use violence. It doesn't work, and it's wrong. Trudy commented on this as well, saying, I see no reason for it. I didn't spank my child. At my age, though, spanking wasn't uncommon when I was a child. Chrissy says, never had to the look. Did it all. We all remember <laughs> all that look. look. That and punishment of grounding from privileges with will follow through. And then we got one from Guy here that I don't really agree with. But he says, we all need discipline as long as you do not use objects like hammers. Talking is good, but spanking to discipline is not bad as long as it's not taken too far. Believe me, I know. Yikes. We want to hear from you. Let us know what you think about this story. We also uh, have a poll going right now. You can head to carolyn.com slash vote now to weigh in. Majority of you say 69% say yes. yes. You hmm. do spank your child. I'm actually a little shocked. I, I thought more Minnesotans would be leaning towards no. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I actually know a lot of people who do spank kids. I know people who don't. It's a real personal decision. Yeah. But um, I, I think there's a huge difference between an occasional SWAT and a Did hammer. you ask your mom like, brigade? Yeah, yeah, I should well, ask yeah. them. Yeah. I, it would have been a good question. Yeah. I, I'm gonna that most aren't, but you never know. I, I don't. I spank. feel like they want to. There's times when your kid oh, yeah. just drives you nuts. Oh, yeah. There's but times when you feel like you can't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's times when it's everything in you yeah. to not spank. <laughs> I, but I'm we still don't. confused by Guy's comment about the hammers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know what the I'm heck he was going the Guy's on house is a frightening place. Exactly. All right, let's go to Sven for the one thing we need to know about the weather. Yeah, I think. Can we please all agree that a hammer is probably <laughs> not far. an acceptable form of punishment? All right. Uh, headed into the 40s today, our warmest day of the week. We got more rain on the way for the afternoon. Otherwise, it's misty out there this morning. Most of that rain wraps up uh, early tomorrow for your election day, but we are talking about a big drop in temperatures coming up. Sven, thank you. You know, we all have our favorite spots to visit, whether it's a sandy beach or somewhere a little closer to home. Yeah, this week, Ellery McArdle has another photo stop, and she's taking you to one of her favorite places. Ellery, where are you? I am at the MSP Airport's public viewing spot. It's a place that I uh, actually stumbled upon online last year and came here for the first time, and uh, I've loved it ever since. So where I'm at is on Cargo Road, and behind me, that is Terminal 1, and you can see a Delta plane that's coming on one of these runways here. There's two kind of main runways right here. It's kind of dark, but it's... Uh, it's easier to see when it's lighter out, but yeah. So this is a great place. You guys know I'm an av geek. I love airplanes. So this is a place that I come to watch planes land and take off and of course take pictures of. Okay, I am super pumped right now and super nerding out right now because this is literally like one of my favorite places to come. It's the public viewing spot at MSP Airport. So it's a great place for kids and families just to come watch airplanes. Like what a simple but cool and fun thing to do. A lot of times you'll see this place packed. It's a small parking lot, but you can get a great view of the planes landing and taking off and sometimes some of the kind of unusual aircraft that come, you'll see crowds here and people with their ladders up here. It's awesome. So I don't have a ladder because I'm just too cheap. So I just use this picnic bench. Here's a Sun Country one. Sometimes I'll go online before I get here. We've had something come from Flint, Michigan. And you can just kind of scroll through and I'll kind of get a good idea like, oh, if something's coming from Amsterdam, I know that's going to be like a really big plane. I might want to photograph that. I've always been interested in aviation since I was a kid. Never to like, I've never wanted to be like a pilot, but just fascinated with this mode of transportation. So again, if you guys want to see this place, um, it's at the end of Cargo Road. Just just plug it into your GPS and you'll find it really easily. Um, it's right next to the FedEx shipping facility, so you'll see a lot of FedEx airplanes. And then it's like a dead end 
parking lot here, so it's easy to find. Also a great place, as I learned, to uh, watch the sunrise. It was absolutely beautiful last week. Oh, and a quick shout out to MSV Airport. This place is actually only open from dawn to dusk, so they let us in a little bit early without kicking us out. <laughs> nice, and you'll catch another sunrise today there. Yeah, special privileges. Excellent, Ellery. Thank you very yeah. much for sharing those fantastic photos, as per usual. All right, well, coming up on Sunrise, the do's and don'ts of voting day selfies. You know people are going to take them. Selfies, interesting. Then saving money at the pump. The colossal collapse many are predicting this week when filling up their tanks. And we've got a brand new segment coming up. We sit down with local moms to talk about some of the biggest issues they're facing.